everybody, it's only Fire Flame talking, and welcome back to the next reaction. Season 9 is in a few days, it's gonna be a lot. But you know what, until then, let, why not enjoy some fanfic readings, or at least some audio dramas, or anything of the sort. I know that I have some shorts left, but I'll get to them when I get to them, I guess. Uh, until then, I really need to get a haircut, look at me. Like, uh, it needs to be done, it needs to be fixed. Anyway. Uh, this uh, our today's video will come at the glorious, glorious delivery of Scribbler. Scribbler. I can say names. Anyway, this is part of her April. A I can't talk. I can't talk. I'm a VA. Talk. This is a part of Scribbler's April verse uh, videos. Apparently, this is a part, uh, just like uh, the one from the last year. And this one is a part one out of six. So I can imagine this must be quite the rabbit hole we're about to go down into. I've always, I've, I've already yelled at her and promised her that I'm going to react to this, so let's get to the reacting. And I hope it's gonna be good. I mean, for me. The, I'm sure the video is fine, but for me personally, like, the I'm, reactions are good and you know what I mean. So, if you're all ready to go, my dear friends. Oh my god, my hair looks all awful, so awful. If you're ready, my dear friends, let us watch. A better love story than Twilight 4. Al Alethonication. Alethonication. In 3, 2, 1, go. Ooh, intros. Intro music. Oh, damn, yeah, April verse. It has been quite a ride with the April verse videos. A better love story than Twilight. To imagine that all of this started as a joke. That's amazing. I love it. A lithonication. So let's dive right into it. Alright, so what you've got for us this time, Scribbler and crew? Alright, so late, late night blues. 100% magic laser proof. It is a truth. Universally acknowledged. Oh well, a librarian the librarian in possession of a good amount of sense must be ignored in order to make the plot happen. Okay. Or so it always seemed to Thornquill. I hate my life. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Damn, art style. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> a heavy sore Thornquill. This insistence. <sighs> okay, I'll bite. Why do you hate your life this week? In answer, Thorny allowed his forehead to thump onto the countertop. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Mm. Nice, right, chaotic. Yet unilluminating. Go away. The muffled nature of the response did nothing to quash its vehemence. See, I vehemence. could do that, but then I'd be a bad friend. Also, I'm bored, and you're usually more entertaining than this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Chaotic, I swear to Celestia, if you don't get out of my library, I'll... His library. <sighs> You'll what? I'll... Do something terrible. Oh, I'm shaking in my saddlebags. Thorny tilted his head just enough to fix one baleful eye on the other stallion. Chaotic threw up his forehooves as if shot. Ugh, he got me! I'm hit! You're a butthead is what you are. <laughs> Chaotic shot him a, a butthead. gigawatt smile, made all the more rakish by his carefully curled beard and earring. Seriously, though, Never dude, heard the Wilsonator narrate before. Anything this is I very interesting. <sighs> My life is an endlessly repeating void of pain, suffering, and late fees on a cosmic level against which I am entirely unable to fight, owing to oh, authorial dear. inconsistency and general sadism. There is no salve for my kind of pain. Um, okay. I have cupcakes? Would that do the trick? <laughs> I don't chaotic think anything can help him right now, Chaotic. Wince. He tapped his chin thoughtfully. You know what you need? A vacation. You and Amiki should totally go away for a weekend mini-break to Manhattan or something. She's all backed up with work for the next millennium. Getting her out of her workroom is impossible at times like this. Oh. Really? Um, how Poor about Amiki. a guy's weekend then? Given how often I end up being the recipient of bad luck whenever we all get together, no thank you. 
Yeah, uh, really? based on the last few videos, I, I can imagine. There's a book convention this weekend. A.K. Yearling herself is going to be there hmm. doing a signing. No. Shit, dude. You have got it bad. Yeah. Chaotic's downturned mouth lost its teasing edge. Talk to me. What brought this on? Thorny sighed. Clearly, Chaotic was not going to go away, no matter how much he was entreated to take a nah. long walk off a short pier. I don't think Chaotic's going anywhere. <sighs> Come on, Thorny. Tell us what it's it is. March. Okay. What's that got to do with anything? It's March. Still not following you, buddy. He gave his most imperious glare. Jesus, that's some artwork. Voldemort, that, Palpatine, those teeth. And P.L. Travers herself would have been proud. It is March. He enunciated slowly. It Late March. Understanding rose into chaotic space like a corpse surfacing in a pond. Oh. Oh. Right. That's one way to yes. describe it. Now you understand. It won't be long now before this month ticks over into the next, and we're dragged into some awful shenanigans with our friends, during which I will bear the brunt of torturous antics and funny diatribes that have rendered my characterization to that of screaming and crying and yelling for my wife and... Not much oh boy. else. Poor the way geez. things have been going over the past few years, this time around, I may cross the boundary into just wetting myself for comedic effect. Oh. That's not true. Chaotic cut himself off. Okay, so maybe it is true, but hey. Good friend. No need to be so down about it. It's just one day out of the year, right? You weren't saying that after last time. Admittedly, my hooves are still pruny from all that washing up at Sugar Cube Corner, but I can admit I brought that on uh -huh. myself. No pony messes with the goody booty. No one Lesson does. Learned. I've grown That's what that. we have learned I'm since sure. last time. I had an arc. Off screen. Yeah, off... Hey! <laughs> low blow, dude. Thorny groaned and let his face make full contact with the counter again. Again, Thorny's face <sighs> is amazing. Who made this work? <laughs> what? 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 Something about Scribbler and he's gonna... Just hmm? want to be left out of things. Is that so much to ask? On April 1st, I just want a place where I can... I don't fucking know. Sit and read a book in peace and be left totally and completely out of all the shenaniganry. Is that even a word? Fuck off, kid. It is now. Well, excuse me, princess. Thorny heard the distinctive sound of hooves hopping down from the countertop and heading for the exit. I'll just get right to fucking off then, shall I? <sighs> At least he's complying to his demands. The door opened and shut. So, Silence hi. reigned. I hope uh, I I I hope for you, buddy. Thorny I hope groaned. for you. Then he fell into the portal that opened in the countertop. Wait, what? Oh fuck my life! <laughs> Poor Thorny. For the briefest moment, the world on the other side of the portal was laid bare before his eyes. What? A flat, mirror-smooth plane of visible blackness, stretching in all directions like some unfathomable sheet of glass. Whether the portal had deposited him miles above it, or mere feet, it was impossible to tell. Sorry about that, guys. Family slowly coming home. Or, again. So, yeah. Hope, it, hope this doesn't happen again. Three, two, one, uh, go. But either way, it was hurtling towards him at a really rather distressing speed. Thornquill squeezed his eyes shut, waiting for the inevitable crushing impact. It never came. Huh? Chest heaving, heart racing, he opened one tentative eye and blinked. What happened? Sitting up straighter. For he was, in fact, sitting. Comfortably, no less. Oh. In a high-backed armchair in the middle of what seemed to be a massive, otherworldly library. Rows upon rows of neatly what? stacked shelves stretched off in every direction, towering impossibly into the dim recesses of a shadowy but recognizably vaulted ceiling above. Beside him, a low table was also stacked with books. A quick glance was enough to tell Thornquill that these had never known the warmth of Celestia's sun. His eyes drifted upwards. Across the table, a book in one of the books. Dungeons and Dragons nonsense we're in right now. 
wearing a look Scrapple, of amusement. you should be a DM. That would be look awesome, for actually. all the world, like a tartan bathrobe, was... Sickness? Sickness? A Stygian eyebrow quirked over one lamp-like, unblinking eye. Hello there, Thornquill. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's what I'd like to know. Forney's eyes flicked to the ceiling far above. Okay. Of the portal, there was no sign. I just don't need what, you're telling me you didn't open that gaping, sucking hole in reality that brought me here? Indeed, I did not. And I'll thank you to keep the invective to a minimum. Some of my best friends are holes. What? There was a deeply unsettling susurrus of agreement <laughs> in the shadows. Thornquill Shadow shipped, ponies, I guess. But Cygnus ignored them, setting his book and tea on two Also, Alithorni Alithornication. Is he becoming an alicorn? Chair, that would be interesting. Hadn't been there a moment before. I probably don't need to know what you mean by that. All right, so if you know. didn't invite me, what am I doing here? So far as I know, no one's ever been able to get into your personal dimension. Not even Discord. Well, Damn. I never said you weren't invited. Just that I didn't bring you here. But the archive is open to anyone, if their need is great and their disposition sufficiently unsilly. So, no, Sickness is a no very Discord, good for non silly shenanigans to obsess with turning situations. things into a dimension measuring contest, the Pratt. And you would have been welcome any time. And I'm missing dialogue. Sorry, Damn it, I want to comment. I'm flattered, but can we get to the point? I've got a lot of brooding, complaining, and hiding to do before April Fool's Day. Hmm. It is getting rather close to the end of March, isn't it? <sighs> Sadly, yes. Now, if there's nothing else... This is so Forty interesting. Forney made to stand, but Cygnus stopped him oh. with a hoof. Now, hang on a moment. Oh. Just because you found yourself here by accident doesn't mean this isn't exactly where you need to be. Oh? Sit. Let's talk. Oh. Thorny gave him his best librarian scowl, peering down his nose at the equine-shaped shadow with unrestrained contempt. Uh-huh. Putting aside the Dumbledore crap, why should I listen to anything you have to say? You've been just Dumbledore as much a willing crap. participant <laughs> in the, the shenanigans as any of the rest of them. Participant, yes. Willing, decidedly not. Cygnus grimaced, and love the walls of the library the use of seemed words. to shimmer slightly. He and, he and Ellie are good. Indignities. I buttoned down the hatches rather more firmly than usual. Though evidently I neglected to iron out the friends welcome in time of greatest need. Him and Ilya, I mean. If I had to guess, incidentally, that's what brought you here. April is coming, and you needed a place to bury your head. Makes sense. The archive sensed your, uh, let's call it distress, <laughs> and provided. Think more desperation is a more ap apt uh, description. But settled back into a seat nonetheless. Oh, what? You're going to play at being a psychiatrist now? No. Uh, that's not the wolf's job. Training Where is it? that level of medical expertise would be as irresponsible and self-aggrandizing as it would be undignified. Cygnus smiled humorlessly. I might, however... Be willing to offer some friendly advice. Friendly? Since when are we friends? We've literally never interacted on screen prior to this. That's just Operative true. Operative word, on screen. Yes, yes, whatever. Can we get this over with? Of course. Cygnus rose, and suddenly they were standing at the head of a long, low-ceilinged gallery. What the crap? Scenes. Walk with me. Thorny sighed. <sighs> Pretty sure you just told me to get comfortable in that chair so we could talk. I reserve my right to narrative pacing. Do you want my help? <laughs> or not? This really yeah, is some Dumbledore nonsense, okay, seriously. What could possibly go wrong? I hope we not find, like, a small naked they pony under a slowly bench. slowly down the corridor, almost shoulder to shoulder. Cygnus kept up only a leisurely pace, and Thorny found himself having to willfully slow his steps to stay level with him. Polite, surely, but some less frustrated part of him also told him it would be wise to stay within reach of the master of this bizarre and slightly unsettling realm. Yeah. Pieces of darkness seemed to reach out and caress Cygnus as he went past, mm. as though the very fabric of the place was alive and sentient. 
Uh, Jeez. Tell me again, how did you even come to live in Equestria, Cygnus? Oh, it's a long and incredibly boring story. And for the purposes of this plotline, we'll pretend that I already told you and move swiftly on. <laughs> wow, what a fascinating and immersive backstory you have. Quite. What, where's the fourth wall? I can't, I can't find it. Where is it? Tucked neatly into the grass. I, I, I can see some pieces Where of it somewhere. Do not question the tea, dear boy. Thorny, wisely, chose not to question the tea. You know, I meant what I said about battening down the hatches. I've taken extra precautions this year. No more mental transfers or idiotic shipping frippery. April 1st will come, and I will be here, comfortably, with my tea and my biscuits and my books, whilst whatever town you miserable ponies actually live in burns itself to the ground. Again. Damn! Sickness went on <laughs> Sickness like giving a crap. He turned his head towards Thorny, unblinking. The expression Sickness sat somewhere so between disconcerting and gibberingly frightening. And if I thought you'd actually take me up on it, I'd offer to let you stay here to weather the storm. You've been through enough as it is. <laughs> Three years in a row, and he deserves it. why wouldn't I take you up on it? Cygnus sighed. He came to a stop next to one of the paintings. <sighs> because, Thorny, that's not what you want. He gestured to the canvas, oh. and Thorny, after only a moment's hesitation, looked. What is this? It was not as he had sorely hoped, a mere painting. Oh? The canvas roiled and bulged, molten hues swelling over each other. I'm gonna take notes from my own campaign, this is over cool. over and over in a steady rhythm, playing out the same four or five seconds of time over and over again. He recognized this particular scene, and the one next to that, as he tore his eyes from the first, and the one after that, and the one after that. He was the centerpiece of every scene. In the first, he scrambled backwards off a hospital bed advanced on by Goody. In the next, he stood alone on a stage, ceaselessly singing about sandwiches. All right. Yet another showed him, hanging by his tail, screaming, before being swept into a maelstorm of green ah. magic that ripped his soul from his body and dumped it into someone else's. Yep. Every depiction was unflattering. Every iteration of his face, a mask of disappointment and shame. <laughs> Damn. Thorny startled backward, appalled. Finally, he tore his eyes away from the canvas. And there's the thumbnail. Focusing all his attention on Cygnus's blank, luminous facsimiles. Well, facsimiles? What did you say this place was again? <laughs> Don't you mean orbs? <laughs> the faintest hint of a smile. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Darker, not a pony, but for the sake of narrative ease, we'll keep referring to him that way, ponies. Muzzle. My home. Every story, every masterpiece, every cautionary tale worth saving. Across the worlds. And why are you showing me this? Because I need to know whether what I suspect to be true is. Cygnus tapped the frame of the nearest painting, and the hospital scene seemed to ripple. If you could change this, would you? If you could stop the yearly depredations perpetrated on our friends, would you? If you could wake up on April 1st with nothing to fear, would you? How? You let me worry about that part. All I need from you is an answer. Is this some kind of Twilight Zone His shit? Bored into what? Thorny with an intensity he had oh, is this going to be like um? Equine -shaped figure oh, I can't remember it. I will. I will post it. Thorny I will clear put it in text. Would it uh, be a time travel thing? Because I hate time travel things. You know, no one ever gets temporal mechanics right, and they always have huge ramifications. And then I'd be the one obligated to go and fix them all. Cygnus pursed non-existent lips. <laughs> I'm going to pretend Damn. you didn't just insinuate that I'd be stupid enough to make this a poorly written time travel... thing. But no, this would be more along the lines of... Hmm, let's call it a unilateral motion to end the April Fool's cycle for good and all. What? Unilateral? Hold on, does that mean you wouldn't want to bring the rest of the gang in on this? The last time cosmic forces were brought to bear at this time of year, Wooten tried to turn all of Equestria into his own private sex farm. 
You really want to risk bringing the castle of compensatory schlongs <clears throat> back into the mix? I forgot that was the name. That's not a combination of words I would have ever expected to hear from you, but That's I... a very good point. On Thor both ends. shook his head, sighing. I know, I, I mean, you know what I mean. I get it. I'm with you. This has to stop, but why do you care? You're not Mr. April Fool's butt monkey for life. What does it matter to you what happens? Cygnus stared at him for a moment, the scenes behind him continuing to loop endlessly. This is so interesting. You're familiar with the concept of a literary cycle, I take it. Of course. Shouldn't everyone know that? You'd be surprised. <laughs> But, humor me, what would you say are the prime elements of such a cycle? Thorny blinked at him for a moment, then shook his head. I can't believe I'm discussing narrative theory with some Lovecraft reject when April Fools is right around the corner. Just hey, let me any Lovecraft Lee reject sickness. is an I awesome to bury one. My head under some Lovecraft is awesome. Cry myself to sleep before midnight <laughs> strikes on March 31st. Incredibly horrifying. Number one. Lovecraft is our dear Luna's shtick. That's that is true. Luna terms. is our vampire two, queen. Hear Lovecraft me out. pony. Luna the night princess or Luna the bat pony? Thestral. Though I understand her I like I like the Thestral. Of the old gods of late. Oh, she didn't call her the wrong thing all this time. I'm sorry, Luna. Unquaint. Bat pony. They're called bat ponies, not Thestrals. And you think changelings are sweet, blameless, and anything but the vile, blood-sucking monstrosities they are. We're all allowed the occasional quirk of perception. But we're getting distracted here. The elements of a literary cycle. Your thoughts, please. Thorny sighed, rubbing his eyes with a concessional expulsion of breath. <sighs> all right. A literary cycle is a group of stories focused on common figures, often, though not necessarily always, based on mythical figures or loosely on historical ones. A fictional cycle is often referred to as a mythos. Okay. So, regarding my thoughts on that, uh, let's see. A uh, cycle should be mythologically formative in scope, emphasize characters and events as cultural icons or archetypes, be pretty consistent across retellings over time. He looked at Sigmund's Oh, tired. got a lot of big words for <laughs> my slow brain. You're obviously looking for something in particular here. Am I close? You are. But what about the status quo? With the exception of... Whatever the ending to such a cycle is, the death of the king, the fall of a pantheon, Ragnarok. the status quo is pretty much God, wouldn't you say? Yes, that's kind of the whole point. Archetypes, flat characters, playing out fables. And what if I told you that some dispassionate, unreasoned force out there was trying to push the same narrative structure onto your world, your life? I tell you to stop being so damn meta that our audience are struggling to follow our conversation and demand to let me go home. <laughs> oh, don't give me that. You know you've seen it. One day out of every year, the hour is struck and chaos reigns. Diabolus ex machina, the improbable insane situation unfolds. Lives are ruined, towns are burned, psyches shattered. Deus ex machina, the improbable insane solution presents itself. Lives are rebuilt, towns shored up from nothing, and psyches remain shattered. Nothing is resolved, no one grows, everyone loses, and no one what is, is any this? the this wiser. Is amazing. What is this? The cycle continues. Cygnus took a step closer to Thor I actually and looked him dead in Holy the eye. crap, I actually like you um, to face re that reacted to that every year from now until eternity. Or are you going to help me break the wheel? Thorn oh god, so close to the mic. He looked at the portraits lining the walls. The humiliations, the depredations, the, the unnecessity of it all. Was he content to let April Fools keep happening? Was he okay with not even trying to fight back? He felt his mouth harden into a thin, angry line. All right. Count me in. Cygnus's grin became razor sharp. Toodle pip, dear boy. He murmured ominously. Toodle pick? What does that mean? Don't you dare fade from me! What does that mean? 
What? Oh, that can't be the ending, can it? What the crap? Scribbler hunkered Hi, down Scripps. in her hotel room. They'll never find me here. Briefly, she checked the locks on the door and windows again. Fuckers. Who? She picked up a book. Oh, the other gangs? And, reflexively stroking the, rest the spine, of the gang, them. held it to her chest like a shield. Absolute fuckers. Who is? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, she sorry. Fell off the bed. Whoops. Sorry. She What's scrambled her like hooves and backed into the floor. been there. Oh, no. No, get out. Get out now. Starry Flame pouted. The glowing portal behind her somewhat diminished the effect. Through it, Scribbler could see directly into the Alicorn realm, which sparkled and undulated into a sea of pretty lights and ethereal mist. Anyone who did not know Starry would have thought her some divine being, stepping down from on high to perform miracles in the world of mortal people. Again, poems. anyone who didn't know Starry. Scribbler, however, knew better. But why? You know why. Um, uh, I really don't. Scribbler pointed at the calendar on the wall. Starry squinted at it. Huh? I am sick to the back teeth of weird shit happening to me on this day every year. This year, I'm taking a stand. This year, I'm staying here in nice, boring, safe Trottingham, where it's nice, boring, and safe for <laughs> you fuckers. You mean friends. I mean fuckers. Starry tilted her head <laughs> to one side. My inner Zener is saying something about the way you phrase that. Get out! Scribbler all but shrieked. Starry treated her to her very best puppy dog eyes. Oh. But out! But I was just... Out! But you can't just... Out! Fine. Scribbler Starry is completely done. It's but amazing. You know that hiding from a problem doesn't make it go away, right? It's working for me. Now, out. It's I working want right to be now. Alone this year. Alone, unaccompanied by myself, solo. <laughs> Starry sniffed theatrically. This oh. it turned into a squeak when Scribbler's hoof met her rump, propelling her the last few feet through the portal and back into the dimension reserved solely for alicorns. And stay out! Wow, you really are a bitch. <laughs> the portal closed on oh, Story's wow. parting words. Great. Now she has no trouble calling me that. Scribbler sighed and went back <laughs> no. to pick up the book. She checked the box again. The reference just intact. clicked. Nice she one. Nice call better. back to a blooper. At least until the thrum of magic sounded behind her. Oh, what now? Starry, I swear I am going to turn you into a pair of socks and walk you through a field of landmines. She turned. Ilya? Oh. Fuck my life. Wait, what? The thrum Wait, what? ended, leaving behind an empty hotel. Wait, room. what? Ah, oh, you tease! You absolute cheese, Scribbler! You should be called T-T-Script-T Scribbler. T-Script. That doesn't work. Oh, so Cygnus wrote this as well. Awesome. Oh my goodness. The nifty narrator. Peter Biblop. Biblio Caffrey. Biblio the Carry. Bossom Body. Shadowy Shitstirrer. Enraged English Poem. Absolutely adorable. Oh, Mammy, chaotic. Era, am I? Okay. Okay, so. Uh, Oblivion Polo. Um, so this is turning out very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Oh, Thornquill. Long have you suffered, but finally it's your turn to pay them back, huh? Unravel this cycle that has been plaguing you for the last three years. But now it is your turn. I'm not sure what his voice is or what I'm doing, but I'm doing a thing. But anyway, that was a love story better than Twilight uh, for Alethonication part one out of six. And it's six parts, so we are in for a ride, so to speak. Um. So, I sense that this is going to be the end of the April Fool's things. It certainly sounds like it's leading up to that. Um, 
yeah. <laughs> like maybe Scribbler wants to end the April thing or like okay. Right now I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm turning to freaking South Park. Um <clears throat> I am sensing this thing can end in two ways. Right now. I can be I can change my my mind along the way. But right now I imagine either they do end the cycle, so to speak, and that uh, the April verse thing ends. No more of it. We had fun. We had our laughs. We had our cries of pain and everything. And but now it's over. Now it's done. Oh shit. Sorry. Um. No, um. Either that, or it's at the end, and it's like, um, it's, it, it it could be like. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's okay to let this cycle go and uh, just have Just have shit happen each year. Just have these random shit storms happening. I Highly doubt they come to that conclusion based on what some of these ponies slash people think of this entire thing uh, So yeah, I One what right now. I think one of those two uh, conclusions will happen one is much more likely than the other. Um, but other, but besides all that, I'm just incredibly intrigued. Um, I am not that clever a person, uh, so many of those big words that were said that when they described the illiter literary cycles, like that's the kind of stuff I have to like read on before I fully understand. Because when I when I it's just told to me through a uh, through audio like this. I don't really get it. I don't really like. I'm not really able to catch all the words and bind them together to like make sense for me. I have to like really like. I have to read it before I understand it. Um, but okay, that is one way to look at mythos. Uh, the Norse one ended in Ragnarok, so I guess we're gonna have our own Ragnarok here with this uh, at the part of the uh, part six. Ooh, wait, it's a cycle. What if in part six? It does actually go into the cycle. What if what if this is a part of the cycle? It's just another version because the cycle has repeated itself like differently three different times. What if this is actually part of the cycle and at, and at the end of part six, it either repeats itself with part one or it's like we they try to stop it, but then it turns out it will never stop. It will never end. The cycle of fuck ups will continue to turn for the end of shitstorm time. Something like that. That would be it would be quite interesting, actually, just to show that you cannot stop shenanigans. The wheel of shenanigans will forever turn. <laughs> That's some theory crafting on my part. I don't usually theory craft, but there we go. I need to cut my hair. But in all cases, this has been very interesting, and I am very excited to see where it goes. And I I don't know what this, the uploading schedule will be, will be like, but whenever a part comes up, do expect me to be right there. Watching, laughing, and pondering and pondering what sickness actually is. In all cases, this is very interesting. Um, and I'm so excited to see where they're going with this. Because, like, sickness is such an interesting entity in this universe they have created with the Aprilverse. Um, because, like... He is some kind of shadow creature, and in in, he has his own personal library dimension that even Discord can reach somehow. Which I think is just the worst. I mean, I am the Lord of Chaos. I should be able to go wherever I damn well please. But anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> Everything is very interesting right now. It will be very fascinating to see how exactly him and Thorny are going to do all this. So yeah, that's my that's my thoughts. So I hope you all enjoyed, and if anyone from the Proverse crew comes around here and see this reaction, I hope you all enjoyed. Hope I did it justice, hope I didn't miss too many important lines, because I want to commentate, but they are saying things, and there are not many pauses, so it's like, when can I talk, when can I comment? I, I, I hope I didn't miss too much, and I hope I didn't aggravate you or annoy you by doing so. But anyway, Thank you all guys so much for watching this video, and I hope that you all did, and please always remember, be nice to each other, and always remember to treat yourself. My name has been Johnny Fireflame, and I'll see you guys next time!